Let's start by the by discussing the ongoing border closures. Are you satisfied with how Queensland and Victoria have handled the outbreaks in New South Wales? Look, I've always been supportive of uh, restrictions on travel uh, when a uh, an outbreak occurs. I think they've been one of the proven techniques to control uh, the virus. Uh, uh, it's very unfortunate, obviously, for those that are impacted by border closures, but they do prevent a broader uh, spread of the virus across the country. Uh, I do think, though, they need to be continually evaluated uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, uh, I think here in Queensland, one issue has been there's been too often a, an unwillingness to look at the borders between monthly reviews. Uh, the Queensland government has assess, set up where they assess it on a month-by-month -month basis. I think that has to be much more... Uh, much. There's no reason why it can't be daily. Uh, we are seeing lower numbers in New South Wales. I think there were no low, locally acquired cases yesterday. So as soon as it's safe to do so, those borders should open up again because it's important for our tourism industry and uh, especially important this time of year for, for families to be able to see each other. And in terms of that review process, should National Cabinet be reconvened to come up with a national approach on tackling borders? Oh, look, I'm not sure that will lead to much uh, outcomes. Obviously, we, we see pretty clearly the states are making the decisions in their own interests. Uh, they're not really cooperating on these sort of matters much. So I'm not sure getting in a room or on Zoom or whatever it is is going to uh, do much. Uh, uh, look, the National Cabinet has been useful in many ways, but uh, uh, on the border question, states have made their own decisions. And look, I support the, the rights of states to do that. Uh, we are, yes, we are one country, as our national anthem now says, but... Uh, uh, we are we are a federation of independent states, and as the High Court has ruled, the states do have the right, the sovereign right, uh, in during a, a public health crisis to limit restrictions on entry uh, to their states. And as I say, I think that's actually proven uh, a pretty effective measure. I mean, WA doesn't really hasn't really had any coronavirus, and that probably wouldn't have been the case if uh, their borders had remained open. You mentioned tourism, and now we're seeing tourism bosses pleading with the Prime Minister to intervene on the borders approach. Has the federal government been too quiet on the issue? Well, as I say, like, no, I, I support, I, I support the, largely the current approach. As I said, there's little things around the edges, like reviewing it more, re, more frequently. Uh, but uh, it's an effective means. I mean, yes, there's impacts of the border closure, no doubt about it. But you've got to weigh that up against the bigger impact of an outbreak in your own state. And as we can see now in Sydney, uh, things like the Sydney Tick Cricket Match are being restricted in terms of numbers of people. There are increasing restrictions on on uh, on gatherings of people. All those things come at a big cost. Uh, and so, unfortunately, there's no costless path here. There's no there's no pathway where no one will bear a cost. Uh, and it's just about minimising that as much as possible. And I do think restrictions on travel uh, have proven to to work in that regard. All right, let's move on now uh, to a story that's emerged today. The nation's top energy advisor is warning that our electricity market needs urgent reform, uh, coming off the back of a report that is raising concern about the security of East Coast power supplies. Is Australia falling behind in this area? Well, Blind Freddy can see that we've destroyed our energy competitiveness as a nation. Our power prices have doubled and now we have warnings that we may not even be able to keep the lights on. We're meant to be a developed country, surely, in this country, we can not have to worry at night about whether the light is going to come on in the morning. Uh, and uh, I think there's way too much bureaucraties here, way too much uh, uh, weasel words. Uh, we need reform. Don't we just need reliable power? I don't think people need reform. We need reliable power. That is what we need. The problem is pretty clear. We've, we've invested way too much in types of power which are unreliable, which are weather dependent, and therefore put at risk the security of the system. So what should we do? Let's invest in reliable forms of power that are there 24-7 a day. Unfortunately, renewable power is the dull bludgers of our power networks. They only turn up to work when they want to, when the sun shines or the wind blows. Uh, we actually need power that's full-time, turns up to work all the time, and that's in coal or gas or hydro or nuclear if we're ever to do that. Let's get back to investing in those types of power to secure our system before it's too late. Uh, and as I say, I think these weasel words about needing to reform and, and, and wanting to cut emissions and all this stuff, let, let's get back on focus of keeping the lights on. And that means reliable power. And things like coal need to be part of that. Just finally, a new report has found that the pandemic is making city dwellers flee the city for the country. We're seeing regional prices soaring for the first time in some 15 years. What's the feedback you're getting from the regions? 
Oh, absolutely. You hear it everywhere you go uh, in my part of the world here in central Queensland, Rockhampton, Yapoon. Uh, mar- uh, property market's just gone gangbusters uh, over, over this past year or ever since the pandemic took off. Uh, I mean, why wouldn't you want to leave the city at the moment? Uh, uh, I just think it's so good living in a country area. Uh, now we can do things like this by Zoom. A year ago, Danica, I couldn't do this with you. A year ago, I'd have to fly all the way to Brisbane or can I come see you in where are you, Sydney, I think, Danica? I'm yes, not too exactly. sure, but I'd have to come and see you somewhere uh, just to do a TV interview. Whereas well, now we, I well, can do this can, TV interview. I'm actually, I'll, I'll let you know I'm sitting in my shorts at the moment. I'm oh, sitting, it's, it's, you don't need to wear top. pants here in regional <laughs> Queensland. It's a beautiful, beautiful weather here today. It's probably going to be 28, 29 degrees in Yapoon. Uh, and you can go and have a swim at the beach uh, uh, at the end of the day. So it's, it's such a good life. So why don't you move up here? Um, and that's what we're seeing in markets. We're seeing prices go through the roof. So get in before it's too late. It's my message. Well, business on top, party on the bottom, as they always say, Senator. Look, it means we can get you on more often. Isn't that right? If you can come on via Zoom or via oh, Skype. Any time, any time, things. Matt Canavan, thank you for joining me this morning. No worries. Have a good day.